Hello, my name is Tara Norman, and I have been married to my husband, Paul, for 14 years. I have four kiddos from ages 12 to 4, and I'm a homeschooling mom. In the summer of 2016, we had started our summer as usual as everyone else. We had just wrapped up our homeschool year. I was in the process of um, signing up to own my own clothing business, which is called Lularo, uh, July 30th. I had just received my phone call that made me a true business owner. I was super excited. I knew that this was God's plan for our family and that God wanted me to start this business. After a workout one morning, I felt a lump in my breast and I knew that something wasn't right. My husband came home from work and I told him something's wrong. And so we went to the doctor and um, at that point I had had a pap smear and a regular checkup and she said, you need to go and have this investigated. So I scheduled an appointment with a hospital that was an hour away because it was the soonest that any hospitals close by could take me and um, to have a, an actual mammogram and ultrasound done. At that point, I was driving in the car by myself. I told God that morning, I said, I need a word from you. I need a word that I can stand on through this journey. As the nurse was checking me in for the biopsy, she was asking her routine questions. Are you on medications? Have you ever been sick? I had never really so much as been to the doctor that year. In fact, when they were looking at my medical history, all that they could see that I had done was gone to the chiropractor. I was a perfectly healthy individual, not on any medications. And at some point I got a little snarky with her and said, not yet. She sat down her pen and she looked me square in the eyes and she said, are you a believer? And I looked at her and I said, yes. And she said, do you mind if I share something with you? And I said, not at all. And she turned around and grabbed something out of her drawer. And she handed me this very tattered um, verse card that had the verse Jeremiah 29 11 on it. And at that point I bawled, I lost it. Because at that moment I knew that God was <laughs> Jeremiah 29 11. It's my favorite verse. I looked at her and I said, you had no idea, but God used you this morning. That's my favorite verse. And she proceeded to tell me that her mom had had breast cancer and she used that verse to stand on throughout the whole journey. The mammogram revealed two tumors, not one. At that point, I was very distressed and I told God, take one, just take one tumor from me. When they went in to do the biopsy, um, I had to wait on the results, it took three weeks. At that point, it was the end of July, I went on Facebook Live, it was something that wasn't even a thing last summer. No one was on Facebook Live. But I stood on the verse, Malachi 3.10, that says, test me in this day at the Lord and see if I don't open the windows of heaven and pour all my blessings upon you. And so at this point, I looked at my faith. I had to take a step in faith. Faith requires action, and I knew that. And so I wanted to, to take the action of proclaiming my absolute faith and resolve that God would heal me. I am not a newcomer to believing in big things. My daughter was born at 29 weeks. She was a preemie. She was less than two pounds when she was born. She stayed in the hospital in the NICU for over 41 days. She had a collapsed lung and was on a breathing machine for three of those days. And they told me I could never have kids again because when they opened me up for the emergency C-section, they found a tumor the size of a golf ball on my ovary. They chose at that point not to complete the surgery to remove it because they didn't know um, if, if that was okay with me. Fast forward two years, I went to uh, a brand new church in Texas and the pastor told me God is the same today, yesterday, and forever. If God could heal yesterday, he can heal today. And I walked forward in that church service and I said, heal me, take the tumor from my body, take the preeclampsia from my body and let me know when I've been healed so I can have more children. It's April 18th, he woke me up and he said, you are healed, you will have a son, and it will be a healthy pregnancy. When he opened me up on 12-27-07, my first question to him was, is there a tumor? And he said, Tara, you have a healthy eight pound baby boy and there is no tumor. We went on to have two more solid pregnancies for a total of four children. So I knew the power of prayer and I knew that God could do anything exceedingly abundantly above all that I could ask or imagine. And so I knew that asking him to heal me from cancer was not too big for him to do. 
So on July 20th, I went on Facebook Live and I proclaimed that healing, that those two tumors would be gone and that he would heal me. And we returned for the results of those two tumors that they had taken a biopsy of. We drove the one hour to get there, my husband and I, and she sat us down in the office and she said, I have good news and I have bad news. The good news was there was only one tumor. One of the tumors that they took a biopsy of said had all the same characteristics of cancer. They found to be cancer free. At that moment, I breathed a huge sigh of relief and I said, thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayer. The second tumor, she looked me dead in the eye and said, it's cancerous. You have cancer, Miss Norman. You have stage one breast cancer. At that point, I took a deep breath, resolved not to cry, and to just give it to God. As she continued to talk to me about the fact that this would be a year-long process, it felt overwhelming, and I burst into tears, and just, I felt like I could not even breathe. How was I going to homeschool? Who was going to watch our four children while I went to treatments? At that point, Paul and I made the decision that regardless of the fact that I had cancer, that this year I would not allow my kids to look back on on their adult life and said that was the year that my mom had cancer. That I would live life purposefully in between treatments. That I would take time to be a mom. That I would continue to homeschool. I would continue to run my business and leave it to God to give me the strength to do so. And I remember asking God at that moment, I'm a prayer warrior. I pray for everyone. Who will pray for me? And God showed up and we had prayers from many and a lot of you prayed for me as well. When I went in for my first MRI, everyone on Facebook was praying that the cancer would be completely gone, but they have to measure your tumors seven times. Seven is such a huge number in the Bible, it's the, it's the day of completion. And I kept thinking, this is the moment, this is it, this is where God's gonna heal me. And I went in for that MRI and um, I have, food allergies already and so I'm, I'm very sensitive to different things and I know my body pretty well and as I was laying in the MRI I was listening to worship music and I remember feeling a sensation that was like anything I've ever felt before. It started off as a warm sensation all throughout my body. It was super personal. I don't know how to describe it but it felt unique and I remember thinking, oh no, I'm reacting to the die and I was about to hit the panic button when something inside me said, wait. And I waited. And this feeling was like a, it filled me up. I don't know how else to say it. It was a warm, tingly, filled me up personal feeling. And I laid there and then I heard the voice of a radiologist on the other side telling me, I have not started the die yet. I'll begin it in a few minutes. At that point, I knew that it wasn't the dye that I was feeling, but I didn't know what. I was so overwhelmed by the noises of the MRI itself that I couldn't process what was happening to me. She then began to dye throughout my body to locate the cancer to see if it was in my lymph nodes. My IV went around across my arm, and when the dye entered the IV and entered my arm, it was a cold sensation. It was the exact opposite of what I had been feeling. So I knew that it was not the dye. And when I got out of that MRI, I remember telling my husband, Paul, I think I was just healed. I think the Holy Spirit just invaded my body and healed me. This is a day and age where miracles happen. And if I can get on Facebook Live and tell you that I believe I will be healed and this cancer will be gone before I go for my MRI, then I know my God can do it. Because faith requires action and I'm giving it. I received my results back from the MRI. Not only did it show that the tumor was still there, but it had doubled in size. That took me from a stage one breast cancer to a stage two. It had doubled in size by two weeks. The devil tried to put me in a corner and tell me that I had become a stumbling block to believers, that those who were asking for healing with me didn't receive their answer, and that I had just told everybody that God was a healer. Who was I to believe in such a huge miracle? And I remember thinking, get behind me, Satan. You don't know God or God's will. And God is a healer. Just because he didn't heal me at that exact moment doesn't mean my healing isn't on the way. I began my treatments in chemo and was doing fine for the first round. The second round, it got a little worse. By round four, it was the hardest I had ever been through. I was up for eight hours straight getting sick. I had two requests from God during this time. I wanna survive it one and done and don't ever let me throw up. I have a fear of throwing up. Like, 
I never once threw up from chemo. I told God I would take all the other sicknesses, but never throw up. I never once threw up. I never so much as gagged. Did I feel sick? Absolutely. But God spared me from throwing up, which was my one request. During this time, we had pastors travel to Israel. I had people praying at the wall for me. There were people in Africa praying for me. There were people in Brazil praying for me. When I asked God, who will pray for me? I would get a text message or a note that said, I'm praying for you or a Bible verse. And um, that happened consistently throughout the whole process. God moves when people pray, right? Um, but we see that the Holy Spirit puts it on people's hearts to pray. Yeah, at uh, the right time. It's God to do the work that he's doing, right? It's, it's just an amazing thing. God showed me over and over and over again how much he loves me and the great extent he would go to to prove his love to me, to show me that I was not alone in this battle. Though I had prayed for many, many, a lot of times when they were sick, it was now my turn and his warriors showed up in full force on my behalf. At round four, Maria came to me one morning and told me that her pastor had received a vision from God that I would receive a piece of paper telling me that I was cancer free. At first I thought that language barrier had gotten in the way because there was no way an American doctor was going to give a patient a piece of paper that said that you were cancer free. In my mind I was saying, no doctor, no doctor is going to give you a piece of paper saying that. I mean that's like a lawsuit waiting to happen and I just said okay. When I, shook, when I said, okay, I said, I'm waiting on it. At any point, it never crossed my mind that God wouldn't heal me sick. We had a rule in our house that if they looked at me or they thought about it, they were to say, mom, you are healed. My husband would wake up every morning and say, Tara, you are healed. No one ever talked about cancer and the respect of it being an active thing in my body. We talked about the healing that God was doing in my body. I went in for my MRI and wanted, was excited, and wanted to know as soon as possible what the results said. I knew the tech couldn't give me the results because it's against the policy. So I asked for a copy of the DVD. I kept seeing a vision of the markers left in my breast with no tumor behind. And the marker I kept seeing was in the form of a cross because they put these markers where the tumors are so that every doctor knows where they're supposed to be looking for that tumor. And I kept seeing an empty cross in my brain and kept thinking, okay, Lord, reveal it to me, show it to me, I need to see it. I took the DVDs home and I plugged them in and nothing showed up but the Florida Hospital logo. I waited and I told my husband, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but I don't see the slides. He came home and tried it and he was like, there's nothing there. I called Florida Hospital and said, I am 40 minutes away. I had asked for the DVDs to be burned for the MRI that I had just taken today, as well as a copy of the one from January. Is there any possible way my husband could pick it up? He was only 20 minutes from the hospital. And she said, sure, would you also like the radiology report? That's not something that they normally give a patient. And I said, sure, and just left it at that. I picked it up, got home, uh, observed with the kids bed, right? And it shows here um, in July, right, the first MRI, um, that there's a mass, right? So 1.8 by 1.2 by 2.3 centimeter oval mass, you know, it's cancer, right? Um, so that's what July says. Part from yesterday, it says, previously described enhancing mass in the lower outer breast, which represents the biopsy proven malignancy, is no longer seen. Um, there is no abnormal enhancement in the breast. It's gone, they can't find it. God had healed me, completely healed me. Maria, I don't know if you're on here. This is the piece of paper that you and your pastor said, God showed you a vision of. This is it right here. It says it's gone. It's not here anymore. There's no more cancer. I could believe it, but I had a piece of paper, exactly as she said three times, that I would have this paper telling me I was cancer free. To God be all the glory. It was not the chemo. It was God's healing power. Not that all it requires is faith of a mustard seed and you to believe that God can and will heal you. 
I don't know why you're here today. I don't know what kind of cancer that you have, but I do know that our God can do anything that we ask and above anything we can imagine. And if he can heal me, he can heal you.